Hello everyone and welcome to Live with Bachmans. My name is John Stottleman. I am one of the landscape designers uh, on staff here at Bachmans and I've been here for eight years now and somehow they've decided that this is a good platform to give me to, to talk with all of you. So we'll see how much they regret that when this is done. Uh, it is a beautiful Earth Day here in Minneapolis. We are fortunate to be outside of the Ideas House here and we're gonna look at some things to do in your beds to get them ready for, for summer so that you can enjoy them and uh, maybe solve a couple problems for you, keep your plants happier, and uh, just give you that time to sit back and, and enjoy your accomplishments and, and be happy with what you have. So hopefully I can provide uh, that information to you. We would love to get your comments and questions along the way here today. So feel free to send those to us. We'll try to answer some as we are going and uh, those that we can't get to, we will get back to you uh, with a response here very shortly. So um, again, uh, I'm John Stottleman, I'm with the, the landscape department, and we are very happy to have our crews out working uh, in your homes now. And uh, we've been out for about a week now, so we understand <laughs> your homes are places that you need to feel safe. So showing you my personality but we'll, we'll try to get to work here so today what we're talking about is prep of your beds for summer and one of the things that is important is to have a proper density of mulch just to insulate your plants to keep them uh, you know have the moisture right to keep the soil temperatures right and uh, also for that weed control so in these beds here uh, some of the things that I look at can see it is you know, we've got beautiful paper paver work here with the accent along the side and but the mulch is spilled out into the bed so you'll see that in your grass you'll see that on your pavers your driveway places like that and so before you go and add more mulch there are some steps that you really should take to improve those spaces and get the uh, get the finished look that you're really looking for the, the look that our crews try to achieve in all the yards when we're working so the first step with that, um, like I said, is we've got this, this paver here that's covered in the mulch. So we're going to pull that back, but more than just pulling it back beyond where the, the mulch is to the edge of the pavers, I'm going to pull it back up into the bed here and uh, get that prepped. And so we've got an area here where there's some soil in it. And when we put this in in the first place, now the soil was down about three inches along the edge of uh, the brick and so one of the things that we did is we had a mulch pocket there over time just gradually as your mulch decomposes as the soil uh, builds up in there that mulch pocket goes away and that can lead to the tendency <coughs> excuse me of your uh, mulch to be spilling out over the, the edge so something we're gonna do in this process is pull that mulch back the other thing that we're gonna do before we start mulching with that is we're gonna recreate that mulch pocket so I'm going to use my bucket here and basically just a shovel along the edge and a nice angle back into the edging is the first step. You can pull that out. Usually it's pretty good rich soil. You might be able to find some low spots in your yard to take this top dress. Find a, find a way to dispose of it if you don't have that as an option. But you just want to create that mulch pocket. So as I've already done on this edging here and along here, we've got about a three inch gap of, of space where that mulch is going to be able to sit in when we put the new mulch in and it won't be spilling out onto the paver so much. The other thing to be doing right now in your beds is cleaning up things that are left over from last year. So underneath your shrubs you've got you know, some leaves and debris that have got in there and you'll want to pull the mulch back from the plants a little bit, clean that debris out. Use your hands, use a small rake, whatever it takes. But what, what you want is you really want to expose kind of the crown of that shrub. You don't want to end up putting your mulch over the top of that crown. Um, so pulling the mulch back again a little bit. So when that new mulch goes down, you can kind of get it lightly right up around the base of the trunk, not piled up onto the trunk or the base of your shrubs. Um, the other thing here, we've got some stilby in this bed. A little bit of new growth coming here. The stilby is one that you can probably just clean up with uh, your hands. So just pulling away that dead foliage. If, 
that doesn't work, a scissors, a hand pruners, just cutting that back. You don't have to get all of it, but getting it, you know, about an inch or so from the ground is good. That'll give that, that new growth an opportunity to come up through and, uh, and really be happy and healthy and not, also from the aesthetic point of not having that dead material from last year in there. So that's how we'd handle one like this. Again, just getting all that debris off of there before you do put the new mulch down, getting those cleaned up. Here on this side, we've got uh, a Carl Forster ornamental grass. And this is one that's gonna give that wheat-like look around the 4th of July, and you'll have that extended in through the rest of the summer. Um, again, this is, I use my hand pruners, the scissors, uh, whatever works for you. Uh, just, you know, generally a pretty small tool will do the job. And you're just gonna cut that back. And I'm right now cutting it back. I've left about six inches or so here. There is some new growth coming out at the base. It's okay to cut that at this point. It's not gonna affect the plant. Um, you know, I usually get them cut back about four to six inches from the ground and, and that should do for the year. This is gonna be a fast growing grass in the spring. So it's a cool season grass. Uh, very, very few of our ornamental grasses here in Minnesota will actually grow early in the spring like this one does. Some of them, it's even gonna be June before you're gonna see those pop out of the ground. So be patient, I know you're hearing that a lot right now, but patience in your garden is really key. Um, it's too early to get planting, so doing these kinds of things right now is, is a good uh, you know, way to get outside and, and spend some time getting your yard looking good. So, um, so I've kinda of cleaned that one up. Does, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to get all the debris from last year out, but get the majority of it back so that Within a couple weeks, this is going to be really be kind of a green mound. You're not going to see much of what's left there. The next thing um, that I'm going to look at doing with all these plants is getting some fertilizer on them for the year. So the plants that we're looking at right here are generally just pretty durable uh, garden type plants. So the product that I would use with that is an Osmocote. Um, Osmocote is a slow release fertilizer. So it's not just a one shot type thing. This is something that you'll put down now and it'll, it'll last you for the season. There's a little scoop inside here or measuring. Uh, a couple tablespoons is really all these different plants need. You can use a tool to kind of work it in. You can get it right at the base or circle it around them. You don't have to be too precise, but really you want to get it. You don't necessarily want to cover your whole entire mulch bed with this kind of product unless you have a big bank of, of plants that's going to pop up through there. You're really doing it more individually by the plant. So again, the dogwood would be another one to get this. Um, most of your perennials are going to get that. There's a few things that you want to look a little bit differently at fertilizer, and those would be things like rhododendrons, um, a lot of hydrangeas. So we have a couple products for that. There's the mirror acid is a, is a long uh, been known product for those acid loving plants like your rhododendrons or some of those hydrangeas that you're trying to get to turn blue. Uh, we also have the Bachman's Mighty Bloom product available. All these products are gonna be available in our store as well as online. And we are happy to help you with curbside pickup or however that is that, that you need help with uh, getting these things right now. So we invite you to grab a pair of gloves, come on into our garden centers. We're gonna do everything I can to keep you safe. So for me then the next step before I actually uh, get the mulch down yeah. is going to be to put down a pre-emergent herbicide. So the product here is Preen. Preen, what it's going to do, it's not going to affect any of your plants that are already growing in the beds. It, it's going to stop additional seeds from germinating. It's not going to be perfect. I, I definitely can attest that you will be doing some weeding if you have mulch beds, but this is the kind of product that might be helpful cutting that down a little bit for you. Um, there are organic options for a pre-emergent as well. Corn gluten is really the most common known. Uh, we do have that product. Uh, corn gluten really, it, it does have the properties that, that also stop the seeds from germinating, but it needs to be added in, in almost such a quantity that it, it's difficult to make it effective. So you almost need to have an inch or two of corn gluten across your, your planting beds or across your yard really to get that same effect out of it. So just, you know, I, I personally, I don't use any product. We try to prep our beds, try to stay ahead of the weeds, um, but, but that is one way if, if cutting down on that weeding maintenance is what you go for, uh, things that, that you can use. So, uh, got all my beds prepped. I have my edges prepped. 
Um, you know, the other thing looking at is these beds right now had probably about two inches or a little bit more than two inches of mulch in them. Uh, you want to keep that mulch between about three and four inches thick. So putting too much mulch on the beds is really might inhibit your perennials from popping up through it. Piling mulch up around the stems of trees and shrubs isn't really healthy for those. So really the sweet spot is to stay in about a three to four inch depth uh, for what for what that mulch is. And in the bed here today, we started with brown mulch. So what I'm going to show you is putting down the western red cedar mulch over the top of that. Um, western red cedar is really my mulch that, that I prefer on most projects. Uh, a couple things about it in, in comparison to say a brown hardwood mulch. It's a natural product so it's, it's going to have a, a natural cedar color. That reddish cedar color and smell like the cedar closet type thing when it goes down. Um, being cedar it's going to break down slower than some other products. So your, your dyed mulches, even your hardwood mulches, uh, tend to break down a little faster. They'll lose their color a little bit. This, as it goes down, usually going to start out that reddish brown color that you'll see, but it's going to mature almost to a little more brown color. Um, so if, if you prefer that versus the, the mulch that tends to gray with the hardwoods and things like that, would be uh, the way I'd go. The other thing about Western Red Cedar is it's got a pretty high bark content in it, which makes it a little stringier and it's going to hold on to slopes better. So if you have a project, an area that's kind of a problem area, the chunkier mulch you get, the more likely it is going to slide down those hillsides. Uh, so western red cedar with the real stringy bark content from, from cedar trees is going to hold together pretty well uh, in places like that. And if you can see the color here, we've got bright sun out today, which is great, but uh, might affect the color. But, so that's a natural color, not dyed. Um, a lot of people are worried about that when we talk about the word red cedar, but uh, natural color is going to turn more mature brown. So the other thing here is now we're putting this over the brown mulch. Certainly that if you want to change your mulch, you don't have to take all the mulch up to be able to do that kind of a change out. But what you do want to do is really prep these edges so you can get a good thickness of that cedar across everything. So again, with the two inches of mulch on here, we really only need to add about an inch or a little bit more than an inch of mulch to get these beds ready for this season. Um, we've got several types of mulch available by the bag as well as in bulk. Uh, we can get it to you, you can come in and pick it up. Uh, we also, our crews, this is the type of projects that we are out doing right now. So we are not planting yet. Uh, our planting season will start in the near future, but the frost free date in Minnesota here in Twin Cities is closer to about May 10th. So we want to be careful about that. Uh, there are some dormant things that will begin planting in the next couple weeks, but you're, if you walk into the garden center now, you're not going to see it full of lush blooming things like you might want. Uh, it's still a little bit early for that, so be cautious and uh, you know, patient again. and Do these types of things, but save that investment for when you're going to have success with it. So, just getting the mulch down, you can spread it by hand, you can spread it with a rake, pitchfork. You know, bags are pretty convenient for uh, getting getting the mulch around without having to shovel it up off the driveway. Generally, if, if you're looking at it in terms of cost, the bag mulch is probably going to add up to a little bit more than the bulk might be. Um, but then you have to compare how you're, you're going to move it around and things like that. So what makes sense for you? Is it just a small quantity that you need you can get in the back of the car type of thing? Or, or is it a big quantity? So, again, spreading it around. So I don't want to bury these plants but I want to get it around them. So I'm going to get it up over the top here uh, of the old mulch. And again, three to four inches is that finished thickness really to get the best weed control, the best insulation for those plants. John, while you're doing that, we have a question um, about the pre-emergence and if people can put that in their garden beds where they're going to be planting seeds. Sure. So the, the question is, can you use a pre-emergent in an area where you're going to be planting something by seed? And, and definitely the answer is no. Um, in that case, you want to use um, the pre-emergent products in places where you've got your established plants. But if you're going to try to grow things by seed, even whether it's uh, trying to seed along the outside of your bed, uh, just the grass edge or something like that, I would give a few feet at least a, a barrier between where you would use a pre-emergent and where you're going to do anything with seed, whether that's grass seed, whether it's your vegetables. Uh, if, if you wait until after all of your seeds have germinated, then it is safe to use pre. So 
something like that. Uh, if you know if you're trying to just keep the weeds down in your vegetable garden or something like that, get all your seeds established. Make sure they're up and out of the ground a few weeks. Follow the instructions on the on the product uh, specific, but usually you'd be safe at that point to get going with uh, uh, putting the preen down once things have germinated. John, we have another question from Heidi, and she's wondering uh, when native perennials or grasses will start coming up. Sure. So Heidi's question is is asking about when native perennials and grasses are going to start coming up, and it, it's a good question because it's something that we get every year, um, especially with these native grasses that you know have definitely become more popular. When are they going to come out of the ground? And the big thing with that is those are called warm season grasses. So warm season grasses aren't really even going to start growing until temperatures are consistently warm. In most cases in, in the Twin Cities here, we're not seeing that until around the 1st of June. So really you have to have patience with that. If it's a plant you planted last year, don't pop it out of the ground right away and give up on it, bring it in for a replacement. At least wait until you know, the 1st of June, maybe even the 15th of June, depending on what the weather does for us here. Uh, some of those other wildflower type things, you're, you're going to see variations in when they pop up. Uh, some of them are actually coming back, you know, from the root system as a perennial. Some wildflower things are going to germinate as uh, seeds this year that, that dropped from last year. So you'll see them more as an annual. So if those are things that you're trying to promote, stay away from the preen in those areas. Uh, but, but, but have patience with it. We need to have pretty consistent warm weather. In most of the Twin Cities right now, I'm, I'm not seeing many plants actively growing. Uh, we're still probably a couple weeks away from that, and that's completely normal. And if you think about it compared to the last two years, we're, we're definitely ahead of the game that we were battling some pretty cold, snowy, wet springs. And so uh, on that end, uh, we are doing a little bit better in, in terms of the weather this year, and hopefully things will, will be actively growing in the next couple weeks. So just finishing up on this, again, making sure that you keep the mulch down below the edging so that, you know, that the mulch piling up over the edging, not only is it going to look good, not look good, it's going to be a, a pain when you're out there cutting the grass. It's also going to maybe promote that grass to actually creep across the edging. So keeping the mulch just slightly down from the top of that edging, whether it's a stone edge, a, a plastic edge, a brick edge, really the, the principle is the same. The mulch should not really at least at the base there, be higher than that. So uh, last steps that you know I'd really look at in a spot like this is uh, just sweeping up the sidewalk so you can enjoy your, your paving. Maybe sit down and have a cool drink and enjoy your space. So thank you everyone for joining us. Again, my name is John Stottleman I'm with the Bachman's Landscape Department here. We're happy to help you. If there's any questions you have, please call, email, send us a message through Facebook, whatever works for you. We'd love to hear from you and happy spring.